Friday, Sunday, May 29th. There we go. Right? Yeah. Um, welcome. You'll see that we have a flag up front today uh, to honor the Memorial Day celebration and actually more of a truly a remembrance day that I'll be including in what we're doing today. A um, couple announcements. Jill had called the other day, she just let me know now. Betsy Eason is in the hospital. Mielberg. Which one? Mielberg. Okay. And so we need to keep her in our prayers. I will announce it again. I did announce it last week, but Robert Yost passed away. I'm not sure that everyone was here last week. Uh, his services have not been announced yet. The obituary was in the paper, but we don't have any dates yet. Um, and you know, we'll pray for various, many, many people when we get to our prayers with the people. So Susan is our worship leader and she has many announcements for you. Susan? We have just a few announcements this morning. Carol is here if you'd like to buy grocery cards. Um, in the narthex on the table are the issues of the journal and our daily bread. Women's Guild Tea is coming up and the tickets are available, they're $5 a piece. And last but not least, on Sunday, June 19th, the UCC Churches in Bethlehem will have a shared worship service at 10 a.m. at Christ Church. And that's all I have this morning. Let's join in our invocation. Holy, healing one, 
righteous restorer. We come as ambassadors of your love, offering our lives in gratitude for all you have given us. May we know you in this place, not as lone individuals, but as part of a faithful family seeking to be made whole again. Amen. Let's stand for our hymn.
your care for our convenience, your solidarity for our self-righteousness, your promise for our praise. Forgive us, we pray. Speak to us again of your love, that we may know you, and by knowing you, we may once again be made whole. Amen. Jesus gives us an abundant grace of forgiveness. Beloved of God, hear the good news. God's love never fails us, even in our division and despair. God desires to be made known. Together, we, we are, are forgiven. forgiven. We, we are, are welcome. We, we are, are one. one. Amen. Amen. Our first scripture reading is found in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16. Once, when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune-telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us, shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God, who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the Spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. And at that moment, the Spirit left her. When her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the mar marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, These men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then he immediately, then immediately he and all his household were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God he and his whole household. <laughs> Our gospel reading is found in the Gospel of John, chapter 17. Jesus is praying. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, for that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those that you have given me 
to be with me where I am, and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them, and will continue to make you known, in order that the love you have for me may be in them, and that I myself may be in them. We have heard the word of God. Praise God.
Well, you may or may not be able to tell by my demeanor, but uh, this has been an incredibly difficult week for me. And I think it's been an incredibly hard week for everyone. The shootings this past week in Texas is not something I can avoid. You know that I do not speak very often on any political topic, and I'm not going to speak politically now. But I am going to speak to what's happening and how it affects those of us who love God and love one another. As many of you know, my own mother was a victim of violence, one human to another. My mother died as a homicide victim. I don't talk about it a lot. Again, by my demeanor, you would never know that my family and I survived such a horrific attack. But it is true, and I carry it with me every day of my life. It informs me, it affects me. And this week, when such a horrific happened, thing happened, my heart went to all the victims, the children, the teachers, the died, the children and teachers that lived, the family members that have to continue, the policemen, and the special workers that had to go in and bring the children out and take care of the scene. There were people for me that way that helped us. And with all that so heavy on my mind, one of the main people that helped our family when my mother died on the day of the crime, he died this week. His name was Freddie Charles. And Freddie was the chief public defender for the city of Allentown, the county at Lehigh. He was our friend. Uh, my younger brother had just started working for him. I have three brothers that are attorneys. And Freddie came and he helped us in ways that I will never forget. And for years, I called him every day, every August 16th, to thank him. My family, we carried on. My father died when I was a child, and we had to carry on then, too. So 20 years later, another loss so horrific. And Freddie helped us. And when I went to his service on Friday at a beautiful Syrian Orthodox Catholic Church, where there are icons and incense and chanting, I felt no time had passed. He'd given his life, Freddie, to help people. But you see, as a public defender, he defended the ones that were considered guilty of the crime. It was a hard burden for Freddie because he did so much good for so many. But that was the life he felt called to. When we read the story from the Gospel today, Jesus is talking about unity. He's saying, I don't want to leave them alone. I, I want them to feel that they're with me. You see, this past Thursday was Ascension Thursday. When Jesus went, body and soul, resurrected back to his Father. And he had to be with his friends again. And he said, Help me help them to know 
We are one. We are one in you, Father, for he, you, God, created all. Now when we go back and look at the story of the enemies, the enemies to Silas and Paul that pummeled them and beat them and whipped them and imprisoned them. Why? Why do people do these things? Why? Why did someone kill all those children and pay teachers and in Buffalo and in Florida and we can keep naming them and Sandy Hook and individual crimes such as my mother's passing. Why? Why? And where is God when these things happen? Where is he? Sometimes it's harder than other times to believe in a personal God. Of course I believe in Jesus. I believe in God himself. But in a very intense way, where is he in his responsibility to protect us, to guard us, to guide us? And when innocents are slaughtered and taken, where is he? We look at the Ukraine. It's a little farther away. Children being killed. Women, men, civilians. There are those that put their power and ego ahead of morality, integrity, goodness doing the right thing. What should we do? Well, I think it's interesting that the gospel, I'm sorry, that the epistle, which is the New Testament reading for Paul, is such a story. They're bleeding, trampled, imprisoned. And God sends a rescue. There's an earthquake. Everything trembles and shakes. Chains are removed. The jailer who was appointed to watch over them thought he would be killed. Because if you lost one of your prisoners, you would pay for their crime. And as Paul saw that this man was going to take his life, he said, stop, don't do that. I don't know about you, but sometimes when people harm me and hurt me and hurt others, I have to work very hard to keep the same level of compassion for them as I do for the ones I love. Isn't that what Paul's showing us here? Not only does he say, don't take your life, but when the man says, I want to believe in Jesus, he understands it, he accepts it, and he goes to his home. He goes to the jailer's home. He goes to the home of his enemy. See, the love that Jesus calls us to, it's not a romantic love. It's not even a friendship love. And it's not a familial love. Though these are all precious, precious kinds of love. He calls us to an agape love. A-G-A-P-E. Agape Radical, revolutionary, inclusive, unbounded love that very few people 
people that we can really do this. If it was a love that was easy, Jesus wouldn't have to have come and taught us. He told us to love our enemies. Extremely difficult to do. What are people's lives like that they, as they move along, decide to kill, hurt, maim others? You've heard me talk about 19 years I worked at Kids Peace. 19 years, 300 to 500 children I served every year. And they rotated. So sometimes it was way more than that. Some stayed three weeks, some stayed five years. The hurt, the agony, the pain. And then came the anger and the aggression and the violence toward others and themselves. But what happened this week happened, I, I thought of them. I prayed for them all wherever they are now. I started in 1997 with those children and stayed till 2016. We can't let children or anyone slip through the cracks. If you see something, say something. The person that did this famous act this week was telling people about it. No one took him seriously. He wasn't a big communicator. I'm not blaming anyone else for what he did. He did that. But we, if we see something, say something. People at my job used to call me the gentle hammer. Good name for me. I won't give it up. I don't give it up. To last breath on this earth, I will do whatever I can to help anyone in need, and in an imperfect way, I'm sure. But we carry responsibility for this revolutionary, radical, agape love. We have to pray for our enemies. Do I want to? Do I? It doesn't matter if I want to. I'm required. I'm asked. Have you ever witnessed a person having the transformation like in the story? The jailer had a transformation. Why? Because of what he saw Paul and Silas endure, what they taught, what God did and shook the ground and he knew, I have to change. You see, we can do certain things. We all have different thoughts, I'm sure, on gun locks, on metal detectors in schools, and security. But we, as Christians who are called to do the hard work of forgiving our enemies, we must pray for those who harm others, that their hearts will be changed, that they will be transformed. We're not talking about feeling sorry or excusing them. We're praying for change, transformation. These people have to be transformed. I just want to close with a story with a child that I worked with that I thought it was a failure. She did not really recover. She did not go on to have a beautiful life. But my prayers for her still mattered. And she reassured me when I felt that my work was not enough, which is how I feel today. Her name was Tara. 
She was 16. She came to Kids Peace from Atlantic City area. At 12, she left home. She was being abused in every way. At 13, she was absolutely on the streets. She went into a life of prostitution. No school, drugs. Big girl, strong. Every bad word you could think of came out of her mouth, every three words. For whatever reason, she decided she wanted to come to spirituality group. She felt loved there. I teach children, and I hope I teach you. You're valuable, you're loved. We have faults, and we will to the day we die. But we matter. We hold value. And so did she. Well, she became my most faithful member. We did painting in my group. We did prayers. We did dance, spiritual dance. We did drama. We did music, poetry. We learned about all the different religions. We learned about God's grace and love. And one day, there was another child, teenager, that came in my room and was feeling the F word and such. And she took his hand and she said, Joey, we don't do that here. With Miss Marion, we have peace here. Leave it at the door, and when you leave, you can pick it up. That's what Miss Marion says. Leave that language at the door. At a certain point, Tara left Kids Peace. Where did she go? She had no one. She was 18. She went to a halfway house in Atlantic City. The worst choice possible. I tried to convince her, don't go there. You can't go there. But she did. Well, she used to call me once, twice a week. Sometimes she left a message, sometimes she didn't. And she'd say, Miss Marin, it's me. I just want to hear your voice. I used to have a singing message for the kids. I'm okay. And then for a long time, I didn't hear from her. I didn't know what happened to her. But I had loved her, but I had mailed her, I felt. And finally, the call came, and it was... It was Tara. And I said, oh, Tara, I thought something terrible happened to you. I failed you. I, she said, well, yeah, I, I got back into some of my old things. But I have to tell you a story. Last week, she said, I was under the boardwalk at the Atlantic City with everything I needed, drug-wise, to end my life. And I said, no one ever loved me. Not one person. She said, then, you came into my mind. It wasn't true. And she said, Miss Mary, no matter if I never change my life, if I die early, your work with me was not a failure because I knew you loved me. You told me God loved me. So always know, that that was one thing you gave me. And I'd hear from her from time to time. She had a baby, very confused situation. I sent her some baby clothes. Never heard from Tara again. I do not know if she is alive on this earth or with God in heaven. But at the very point that I felt a total failure to this girl, she told me that my love for her meant something, you see. The jailer in the story, do we know what his life was? Do we know if he was searching for something? Do we know if he hated his job? Something was happening. Because he could have walked away and he didn't. He came to Peter, I mean Paul. He gave his life to Jesus. 
invited them to his home. Paul was the same way. He was transformed. So my friends, pray for those who this day are considering hurting others, killing others, going to war. Help God seize their hearts and make an earthquake and change them. We have to change them. But we can't push it. We have to pray for that change. Our prayer is powerful. Let us not forget you are God's ambassadors. Your love, your prayers will change people. And with the beginning of my story, I talked about Freddie Charles, and he changed my life because he was there for me at the difficult time. And so that's the other part. No matter how hard it is for you, go to people, be with them, sit with them in their loss, their agony tragedy and despair. It will mean the world. You are loved. You are beautiful. Amen? Amen. Do we have one? 
think we might, but the Pennsylvania flag is the special flag because in Pennsylvania and Rhode Island were the two states early, early in the co when they were colonies that really allowed worship of all faiths. And that was a very unusual thing. And so, with it being Memorial Day, this flag represents hundreds and hundreds and thousands of men and women who gave their lives that we might be free. Is our country perfect? No. Are we suffering? Yes. For, for anyone who's traveled outside the United States, it's a huge learning curve to realize the freedoms we have here that are different than other places. And so I wanted this here today. Today or tomorrow, I'll go to Freeland, Pennsylvania. It's where Mary's from, too. My parents are married there, and I want to go and put flowers there. I know it's their bodies and not them, but we need to honor their sacred remains. This flag means a lot to us. And we have to be sure to protect our country and the people in our country, are especially our innocents. And so I have these red, white, and blue flowers for us. And these, if you remember, I used these for the baptismal of the generations. And once again, the generations that go all the way back to the beginning of time, to those who fought for justice and hope and love of other, for love of God and country, for those in power now, that their hearts may be transformed, not just in our country, but all countries, that we can get back to what God would like. And for our soldiers, those who gave their lives, those who died natural deaths but had served in their memory, men and women, all the way back to the beginning of our country. And for those who serve now, wherever they are, our military, and for those who serve us, policemen, the teachers, medical people, <laughs> clergy, all those who serve in every capacity, from what would be considered the smallest to the tallest to the highest. <clears throat> and for those that are suffering this week now, for their freedom was taken, their loved ones were taken, for those loved ones, for every soul, every child, every teacher, every person that has lost their life to violence in Texas and all the other places and in the Ukraine. We light this one candle. We love each one, each one, each person. So let us just take a moment now and we'll have a quiet prayer. And we ask that the Lord will speak to us and show us what it is that we can do, that we can be, how can we help? Ask the Lord, speak to me.
beautiful song called Speak to Me. It talks about I am listening, I am waiting, I am your servant, God, speak to me. We claim these healings and these messages of hope that we will continue to be ambassadors for the agape love, for the transforming of hearts, for the comforting of those who grieve. Let us be a witness to Jesus Christ. Amen. Now please stand and we'll say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. And I wanted to mention the flowers up front here are from Dot Rudis in honor of her beautiful and beloved daughter, Monica. All right, now let us offer truly the sign of peace, an instrument as our beautiful choir sang to us. And I want to commission you. I've been talking to you about many things today. I ask you to go into the world. Thank people for small things, for big things. I thank any and all veterans in the room. Where are the veterans? I know we do it on Veterans Day, but anybody who served in the military, can you stand? Can you stand? Yes, we thank you so much. It's a small thank you for a huge sacrifice. I commission you to go out and be a force for change. Do not give up. We cannot. Our emotions may say that, but the truth in the heart, we cannot. You are needed. We pray for all, for all, and for those who gave the fullness of their devotion. We thank them. Across our country tomorrow will be many memorials out there. So I just commission you to go out and continue to be a force for change and love. I give you a blessing. You may stand. Please stand. The light of God surrounds you. The love of God enfolds you. The power of God protects you. The presence of God watches over you wherever you are everybody God is and where God is all is well may it be so amen amen, amen. have a good day everyone